What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. I haven't done a Tau Fire Warrior in such a long time. The last time I did, it was in the desert Tau ta color scheme. That those sandy, sandy oranges and and yellows. And I thought, you know, this Christmas they're releasing a lot of battle forces, and it might be fun to do a model in each one. So if you are a new painter or a beginning painter, or if you are going to be getting one of these and you're just curious on how I would paint up one of the figures that you're going to be getting. I'm going to take you through uh, each of the battle forces, uh, a model, not each of them, I'm, I'm not rich, and I'm going to paint up uh, the color scheme that is on the box art so you can replicate Games Workshop's color schemes with a minimum of effort and a minimum of time. Th as long as this video is, that is how long it takes to paint one of these guys, but a lot of it is just me talking and showing you my technique and how I do it. You want to go off and uh, cut out some colors, make it even simpler for yourself, you can definitely do that. And remember, while you're painting up one of these guys, the next, uh, the one you painted before is drying. So if you do it uh, assembly line style, you are going to have an army painted up and ready to go in no time. So the colors we're going to use, first of all, we use a white primer. I've used P3 because it's the only white primer I have, but you might have Games Workshops Corax white that works absolutely fine. Then we use uh, to tidy up your colors. You have white scar. You also have Othuan gray. You want to keep those handy because you might be making mistakes, and if you make mistakes, you got to go back over and clean up that white armor. The second color we use is black. Now I'm using this Vallejo color black, but any black is fine. Black is a very you know, common color across all paint ranges that is not hard to get right. So you want black for the undergarments, you can see. Then we want to paint corn red on the chest symbol and the shoulder symbol. We want uh, Balthazar gold. Where's my Balthazar gold? And that's going to be your... Here we go. It's going to be the... Uh, gold ball bit at the end of the rifle. We also used lead belcher. All my paints look the same right now. <laughs> lead belcher is going to be used for the tips of the barrels. See like those two colors you could cut them out and still not lose the effect of what we're going for here. I also used uh, for the shade the ever popular wonderful Agrax Earthshade. And then uh, to top it off, we had to paint his little toes. We used the fang. And the other blue color we used is Kalidor Sky, which is going to be his islands. All right, that's going to do it for him. And oh, one more thing, Mechanicus Standard Gray. I didn't know this. I don't know, maybe you Tau players might have noticed this, but when you're painting in this color scheme, the Viorla black and white, they paint part of their rifles, like the stock, they paint it in gray, which I always thought is, uh, was just white or black like the rest of their armor, but no, gray. The only part of this model is, that's gray is like one small part of their guns. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, please hit the like button, leave a comment. All that stuff throws me into the algorithm and helps other people who want to start collecting Tau and uh, are looking for a simple color scheme that is easy to replicate and easy to do. That's going to do it. All right. I hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you in the next one. If you would like to see how we finish this guy up to parade ground standard, then stick around and we'll see you in the video. All right, guys, we're going to get started painting up this Tau in the Viorla color scheme. I have taken a look at the colors for the models and I've decided that the armor is going to be predominantly white, all the armor pieces, and the uh, cloth pieces are going to be black. So when you're thinking of what you want to sp what you want to spray the model, what color you want to prime it in, you're looking at what is going to cover the most area and be the easiest to paint over. White is a very difficult color, and I think it's a lot easier to spray prime the model in white and touch that up rather than spraying it in black, because when you're painting black over a white, it covers a lot nicer. So we are going to go with this P3 white primer. You can also use Corax white primer from Games Workshop or any other spray primer. 
You just want to make sure that you get a primer that's going to cover and adhere to the model sprayed on in a couple of nice even and thin layers so it doesn't get too thick and chunky. And we're going to come right back in a little bit to see what that looks like. This is also though now the time if you want to uh, base your model to do the basing material first. And what I've decided is I'm going to base these models with some uh, technical paints. So I'm not actually going to glue anything to the base of the model to start with. Now if I were painting a model that was going to be on a battlefield in like the jungle or the forest and I would want some ground cover over some sand and some uh, like grains of sand then a uh, debris then I would glue on the model the sand first using some white PVA glue let that sit and dry and then when you prime the model that spray primer is actually going to lock the basing material into place but because I'm not going to be doing that I'm just going to spray prime the model in white and we will be right back to see what that looks like all right we let our model dry after getting primed and now we're ready to get started with the base coats I'm going to get started with black and you can use Abaddon Black or any model range color black. Vallejo is just the one that I happen to have in front of me at this very minute. The goal for this part of the tutorial is that we're going to be painting all of the under garments. So everything under the white armor plates. And uh, if you do happen to get some onto the armor plates that's fine everything can be cleaned up we just didn't want to start with this uh, as a primer color because we wanted the white to be the color that we see Probably started with the bigger brush than I should have, but as long as it gets the job done, it's okay. And also, I thin out, I thin down my paints on my palette paper. You can use a wet palette. I have to double check. I think actually the boots might be black also. It might just be that the white is the armor plates. We just want to get our guys painted up as fast as possible for this uh, battlefield ready tutorial. We're also going to be getting his uh, belt. I noticed when I was painting or when I was looking at the model on the Games Workshop website, the belt was the same color as the undergarments. funny because this uh, these colors the white with the red accents over the black is also kind of Christmassy so that's kind of fun and then on the helmet so the helmet is interesting because the front of the helmet is like hard armor but you'll notice on the product shots and everything the back and like around the back of the head and like the neck, all of this is 
cloth looking. So we're gonna paint that in black. And right under the little antenna. The final thing we're gonna paint black is the eye lenses. So just get a little dollop of that black paint and get right in there in the center. Perfect. So I just double checked my reference picture and it does look like, except for the, he has like a tau toe sticking out of his boot. So that's gonna be in tau skin colors, like a little hoof. But the boot itself, as well as any of these straps that you see coming out of the leg, uh, out of the trousers are gonna be black. I am not in frame, Igor. Yes, master. You're supposed to be working to keep me in frame. Oh, apologies, master. I haven't quite yet found my bearings yet in our new studio. What do you mean? All you're supposed to do is just sit behind the camera and record and keep me in frame. I know, I mean, I haven't found where all the neighborhood cats hang out yet. So we're just painting the base just so that I don't have to look at this white primered base all day. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this. Just saving some time for later, keeping it on camera. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. And um, while we do though, we can actually move on to another color. So let's paint the gray on the rifle. I'm gonna be using Mechanicus Standard Gray for this one. Now, if you look at the box art or any of the art for the Tau uh, in the this Viola color scheme, you're going to notice that they have gray on the bottom parts of their rifles. But what's interesting is there's no other gray areas on the model. So when I was painting or when I was looking at the reference sheets for this guy, the reference photos, I had to find out where are the gray parts actually. And it's the stock of the rifle. And if you're painting Pathfinders or Breachers or the other guys, then it's gonna be different depending on the weapon and on the uh, crisis suits as well. You, you just wanna double check the box art to see where the gray bits are. And just for now, I'm not sure if it's gonna be gray, but the scope will do. All right, not bad, not bad. Next, we're gonna take Balthazar gold. That's right, there is some gold on this model and we are going to paint the little ball, the end of the rifle. And that is probably not the technical term for it. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing I should have used a smaller brush. That's okay, we'll clean it up in post. Okay. Now we're gonna get to look for all of the red bits and paint all of the red areas. So this next part is gonna be real fun. So I decided to clean up a little bit. You can see that when I checked the um, when I checked the the box cover art, the top plate here is actually white. Down here on the case on the stock is gray, and the scope is black. So there's a little trickiness. I went back with Othuan white to clean those up, and uh, you can also use white scar. White scar is a little bit thin though. I thought Othuan gray was a nice step up, and then we're gonna clean up. A little bit later, go a little bit higher. The next step we're gonna do in this first section is paint corn red 
for any red bits on our model. And that is specifically going to be the chest circle. Depending on if you're painting a character model or like a crisis suit or something that requires a little bit of extra attention. Like the character models, I think the, the sergeant guy equivalent in this squad is going to have a red shoulder left shoulder pad with a black center circle. But a regular regular towel guy like this is going to have, I believe, just the regular uh, red in the center, red in the center. And anytime I'm painting a circular surface like this, I try not to get the paint at the tip of my brush and get it into the cracks because then it can pool and spread out in ways that I don't want it to. So I'll put the paint close to the center of whatever I'm painting, like this circle, and then I'll slowly spread it around. There we go. The final thing you're gonna wanna do is paint thin lines of corn red up the side of the helmet. This is gonna be a little bit tricky and if you make a mistake, which I think we should just assume you're going to make a mistake, it's no problem unless you're like super talented and precise, then you're just thinking of doing three vertical lines up and down the sides of the right side of the helmet. That's like their barcode. And for now, we're gonna leave it like that just so it can dry. We're not gonna clean it up because then the paint is gonna run. But eventually we're gonna clean that up using the white paint. We're gonna smooth out the lines so they don't look as hand-drawn and look a little bit more like they're printed on. And uh, for now, it's totally fine. We're gonna ignore it. And <laughs> we're gonna move on. It looked like, I couldn't tell if it was silver paint or gray paint, but we're gonna use silver of Lead Belcher. And we're going to paint the uh, ends of the barrels of his rifle. It's totally also fine if you want to go with the gray. Mechanica standard gray. We're being as mindful of the time as possible because we're just painting battlefield standard. The last thing we're gonna do is use the fang to paint his toes. So let's look at the model now and you can kind of see where the black paint might not be dry yet. Okay, so we might come back to this, but I'm gonna see if I can paint his hooves that are coming out of his boot. His trouser, I guess. I don't know which we'll call it. So he's got talons and a hoof, but he also has this blue skin area. That's what we're focusing on. Might have made a mistake if, if I uh, go back once the filming is over and take a look at this guy. I might have painted into either his talon or his trouser. And if I did, then I'm just going to fix it in post where I can actually hold the model up to my face, which I can't really do right now. Let me get the heel.
All right, hopefully that's going to do it. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Agrax Earthshade and we are going to water it down, really, really thin it down, and we're going to paint over uh, the entire model. So before we take the Agrax Earthshade out, I just want to make sure sure that I mentioned that I did clean up the symbol a little bit. It was way easier to do when I could push the model up like right up to my face and paint it there. I'm uh, not able to do fine detail work as much as I'd like to with this current setup but I just want to show you what I did and uh, describe my process. Basically I took the white paint after the red paint had dried and cleaned up the lines a little bit, cut them across the top so that the uh, little areas sticking out at the top would flatten out and then cleaned up the sides as much as I could. It's it's still a little bit messy, but it's a lot better than before. And if we're just talking tabletop standard, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> so now, that we're now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna find my Agrix Earthshade. We're gonna water it down a lot, and then uh, we're gonna use it to paint the model and get into all the cracks and crevices. The thing about using Agrax Earthshade is it is such a heavy, heavy paint. and it very, very easily can get into all the wrong spaces. So we really wanna be careful about how much we use. We wanna thin it down as uh, much as we can. And be very careful about using too much on our model. Now we are gonna cover the whole model, so we do want a fair amount but I would say go like two to one so for every little bit of Agrax Earthshade that you're putting in your wet palette get twice the amount of water to mix it all right here we go You might be thinking, oh, it doesn't look that bad. I might want to even make it look a little darker. I think I'm just going to use more Agrax Earthshade. But um, just be careful because we're also using it to shade these flat, flat armor pieces as well. And there's not uh, any crevices or cracks to get those that shade into. So if you do use a little bit more, like I think I am going to use some for the the uh, leg armor pieces. You also wanna make sure you shake your, shake your uh, pot very well too. So I am going to just get it into the lines so we can see the lines, but I'm not gonna add this heavier, heavier mix to the uh, flat armor areas. I want it really just to do like a line lining in of the detail. And the good thing is, remember we used uh, black for the entirety of the undergarments. So you get a little bit sloppy with the application of the shade and it's okay if it gets on the black areas. All right, we're gonna let that dry for a second and then we're gonna finish up by adding our basing, but also I'm gonna clean up the hooves. I think I did get a little bit of that blue paint where it shouldn't be. And uh, then we're gonna uh, finish out with some final highlights. We're gonna paint in the eye lenses and 
uh, we're going to do the basing separately so it's not going to take up the time that we're going to kind of calculate for how long it's going to take to paint up one of these guys. And then we'll be done with the battle ready Viorla Tau. All right, you guys, the last thing we're going to do is paint up the eye lens. So we're going to use Kalidor Sky. And uh, the tricky thing with this is that it's uh, the only the only thing we're going to see of this character's or this model's face. And not face, but I mean helmet. So they say that the face of a miniature is the focal point. And when you're painting a model in helmet, like uh, in a helmet like this guy, or, uh, the Tau, or Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, uh, looking at their eyes or seeing what their eyes look like is very important. So you only have two lenses and they're at the center and right below it. The first one is a little big. Let's zoom in, Igor. Yes, monster. So we're going to paint right there. Now the tricky thing also is you're painting on black, so it's really easy to paint too much. Just want to dot it because we don't want the paint to run into the black. All right. And you can see, really, the model is kind of messy, but when you think about how much time we spent on this model, uh, and you're like, where boss hey, where's all my clean lines? Where's all the, the precision and everything? That kind of comes in when you are getting into the details after the shades. So this is going to do it for this model, for a tabletop standard, for getting him on the battlefield. This is totally fine. You don't have to do any highlighting work. If you want, if you want to, you can go back with White Scar, Othuan Gray, any of those white colors and just paint up some of the flat armor areas while leaving the recesses shaded with that brown of the Agrax earth shade. Uh, you can also highlight up the red a little bit to give your models a little bit of a pop. In fact, what I would do, what I would suggest, just because, okay, look at the model from even from a little bit farther away. When you see him on the battlefield, see like 30, 40 of these guys on the battlefield, they're just a lot of white armor with some black accents and a little bit of pop of red. So nothing we can really do at this point is going to make them stand out too much, but this is a very simple, easy way to get him ready for the battlefield. Like if we were to paint some of that white color onto the helmet or onto the shoulder pads, they might clean up the lines, take away some of that uh, Agrax Earthshade color tone. But there's still, it's, there's not going to be any detail work that we can really do to make them pop until we get to like the battle damage, the chipping on the armor, the uh, extreme highlights and stuff. So for now, we're going to call it a day and say that you can paint up to this standard very simply using no really uh, difficult techniques. There's no heavy color theory to learn with the white, to paint the white paint correctly. It's just really, really simple. You spray the model in white primer, and then you use black to black out the undergarments. You use a little bit of the blue for the toes, some red for the armor pieces, a little bit of gray for the stock, some blues for the eyeballs, and that's it. There's not a lot of colors you need to buy. If you're a beginning painter and Tao is, you know, you get one of these new battle forces for Christmas or something, this is a very simple way to paint him up. Just get, in fact, you don't even have to get this crazy into it. Just imagine if all you had was white primer, um, some black paint, and uh, I guess a little bit of white paint to clean up if you make any mistakes, but some red, and that's all you really need. A pot of red paint, a pot of black paint, white primer, and uh, you imagine you don't really need even the gold detail or anything else. All of this is just gravy on uh, this is like the little cherry on top that we're going to that it kind of looks like a cherry the shoulder the little uh, red insignias all right i'm going to call it there you guys stay tuned when we come back to this tau uh, showcase uh, parade ground tutorial we're going to do part two of it we're going to do that extreme highlighting we're going to do a little bit of the battle damage we're going to highlight all of the colors make them pop even more we're going to make the lens of the helmet even a little bit brighter and uh, that's we're just going to make our model look uh, elevate him from being a battlefield warrior to being someone that's like ready for the parade ground. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys want to support my channel, 
I've got the Patreon link below, and you can also join our Discord where we're po posting all of our videos and pictures and just connecting with the community. If you have any questions or you want to connect to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do it there. And uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Hope you're having a great day. We'll see you in the next video.